Hey everyone, it's Corrado Ranjo, and in this video, we're gonna talk about my nightmare owning a franchise. Back in my first business that I started, I was a nightclub promoter. I, I did a lot of events, a lot of big club events. Annually, I used to have some events that would do over 5,000 people, and I'd have a lot of weekly events. And my father was terrified because I'd be working every single day, and he's like, Corrado, you have to get out of the club business. There's a lot of shit happening. There's a lot of gangs. There's a lot of shootings. So you, you got to get out of the business and try something new. So I took his advice and I, I started doing some research. I went to a lot of big franchise events and I found this one uh, franchise. It was a PETA franchise and I was really excited about it. Like I liked the fact that it was, you know, healthy food because at the time, you know, before that I used to play professional soccer. So I remember um, calling the owner of the franchise and I was talking to him. He's like, look, you have to come because we have some locations actually that are opening up. You got to come meet me and we can discuss uh, some great opportunities. So I went down to go meet him with my dad and he sold us on this, lo this one location. There was a school across the street. There was like two ice rings, a big soccer club with like five soccer fields. And I knew this because I actually played on that field for several years. I remember I'm like, yeah, this, this is a no brainer. I should, I should move forward with this location and, and go ahead and, you know, and, and purchase the spot. And I did, but this was a nightmare. I remember after agreeing to the location, they sent me over a contract that I had to review. So I looked into this and got a lawyer that specializes in franchise to review the contract. And I remember he was crossing out all these paragraphs and I'm like, what the heck is this guy doing? He's like, Corrado, don't get into this franchise. Like you're gonna regret it. And I'm like, why? Like, I, I don't understand. He's like, trust me, I do this every day. There's a lot of things in here that can, you know, really affect you in the long run if something were to happen. So I didn't take his advice, even though I paid him a lot of money to review everything. And I was just stubborn. I just went with my gut and I was wrong. So at the time, I remember I only committed to putting down $40,000, but I was able to get out if I really wanted to, and I didn't. I remember driving to different locations with my father and asking the franchisees how their business was doing and they're all giving me the same response like yeah you know it's it's okay it's not that bad it's you know it pays the bills it's doing you know it's, it's okay some of them were saying it's amazing that they do very well so I didn't know who to believe because whenever I would ask them they wouldn't give me that much information at this point I remember I was so excited I couldn't wait to open the doors to serve my first customer and then I remember there was a lot of construction happening. It was like two years into it in, in delays. So a couple months before we opened up the location, I met up with the owners again and we had a lot of training and stuff like that going on. And then I just got this really bad vibe from the franchise or, and I told my dad, I'm like, look, I gotta give this guy another 40 grand. I'm like, now's the time I can actually get out of it if I want, because he even told me himself, he's like, Corrado, if you're not that serious about this, don't do it. I'll, you know, you don't have to do it. So I told my dad, I'm like, Pop, I don't think I really want to do this. And he's like, Corrado, in Italian, he said to me, Guanuzido ballo a ballare. That's in Sicilian. So basically, what it means when you're in the dance, you got to finish the dance. I finished the dance, I paid the 40K, I opened the doors in April 2008, and then I closed them two and a half years later. The business drove me to the ground. I remember I was losing so much money every month and the franchise was still taking the royalty fees. They wouldn't help at all. And I would ask them, look, can you please support me? I wanna, I wanna invest this money into something else that can build my business. And they're like straight up, no. So in the beginning, when I first opened up the location, I remember I wanted to make a connection right away with the students because they would come for lunch, sometimes 50 to 100 every day. I remember when I was in high school, I used to support this guy that owned the burger joint and I used to go there anywhere from three to four times a week. So I wanted to make that connection like he did with all my friends and, and you know, support the students, even give them some free food once in a while because you know, that actually brought a lot of students back and I wanted to build that relationship with these students, which made a lot of sense. But in the beginning they were coming, but later on they stopped coming and I, I, I couldn't figure out the reason why until one day a student came in and then I asked this guy, I'm like, so where have you guys been? Why don't you guys support me anymore? He's like, Corrado, what do you mean? He's like, we're, we're actually supporting you every Tuesday for PETA day. He told me, he's like, you didn't know? It's actually named after your location, Tuesdays. That's what he said. And I'm like, are you out of your mind? Are you like, are you just coming up with something? 
So then I told him like, do me a huge favor. Just take some pictures with your phone and, and send it to me or show me the pictures because I don't believe this. So he actually goes and takes pictures of the whole entire setup. I remember after I got the pictures, I got, a, I got some copies for myself and I went across the street, spoke to the principal. The principal's like, yeah, like we're doing this. We have a, we have a deal directly with head office. And I'm like, how does this even make any sense? These guys know that I'm losing money and they're trying to make me lose even more because they actually made a deal directly with head office. It wasn't even another location. So head office was making pitas, delivering them to the school and selling them to the students when I'm there desperate for business. And I, I didn't make anything. I was losing so much money and they didn't want to help me. It didn't go very well. And then after something else happened that really messed me up, which was Starbucks shut down. So I had a Starbucks a couple doors down for me. It used to bring us a lot of people. And the reason why I was able to calculate how much money the Starbucks would bring in in general is because when it shut down, we were losing two to $400 per day. I didn't care how much money I lost at this point. I remember asking a lawyer for advice and he's like, Corrado, you're gonna have to go bankrupt. And I'm like, why do I gotta go bankrupt? He's like, well, you signed personally on a lease for 10 years. So basically what that means is that if my company cannot make the rent payments, then Corrado Rangel himself is responsible for all the lease payments until the end of the term. I tried selling the location. I remember in this agreement, somewhere in this agreement, it says that the buyer, the, the potential buyer needs to get approved by the franchisor. My accountant had a potential buyer because he knew what I was going through and he knew that I fronted a lot of money to open up the location because we set up, we paid for all the fees for all the construction and all that. And he had somebody that lived in the area that wanted to start up a business. So he recommended for them to come and maybe uh, buy, buy this location for me. So they had to meet up with head office and then head office then told them, why are you gonna buy this location? So then they reported that to my accountant. My accountant told me like, do you know that the head off people from head office are telling your potential buyers that they shouldn't buy your location? So it was basically like, they didn't wanna help me at all. They wanted me to fail. This franchise that I bought into was just, just set up for failure. After walking out, I had to go bankrupt because I was responsible for any other payments that would have occurred. I didn't want to go through it at the time, but looking back, I needed that beating to learn from it. It was the best education that I ever got. So if you're a young entrepreneur, don't be afraid to take risks. You know, being a young person gives you a lot of time to just get back up and be better like I did. Like I learned so much from this experience, but if I would have invested into something better, I'd probably still till today own that business. So just be smart and remember due diligence is very important. If you guys enjoyed the video, please give it a like and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions, please ask me in the comment section below. Adios. Hey guys, it's Corrado. If you want to watch more videos, just click over here. If you want to subscribe, which that would make me really happy, just click over here. Have you subscribed yet? I need an espresso.